Greetings. My name is Konstantin Monastirsky. I am a medical writer, performance nutrition consultant, and an expert in forensic nutrition. This new field of life science investigates connections between supposedly healthy food and undeniably lethal diseases. Colorectal cancer is one of such diseases. It is the most dominant and deadliest nutrition-related cancer, close to 160,000 new cases diagnosed annually in the United States alone. So our desire to prevent it isn't surprising, especially when we are told that regular colonoscopies after age 50 make colorectal cancer more than 90% curable, but only if you get tested in time. Actually, this is a lie. Screening colonoscopies do not prevent or materially reduce anyone's risk of colorectal cancer, regardless of age. And if anything, they may actually increase your overall risk of cancer and not just colorectal. Here are the true facts. First, according to the American Cancer Society, up till now, there are no prospective randomized controlled trials of screening colonoscopy for the reduction in incidence or mortality of colorectal cancer. The National Cancer Institute is even more explicit. It is not yet known for certain whether colonoscopy can help reduce the number of deaths from colorectal cancer. This means that 90% cure rate figure cited by Muscoric back in 2000 is pure fiction. It also means that most of the 14 million plus screening colonoscopies performed annually in the United States to the tune of 20 to 30 billion dollars aren't recommended on the basis of rock solid research or clinical indications, but on the willful misinformation of American public. Consumer fraud, in other words. Second, according to the analysis of actual outcomes, screening colonoscopies are essentially useless. The patients in all the studies had at least one adenoma detected on colonoscopy, but did not have cancer. They developed cancer in the next few years, however, at the same rate as would be expected in the general population without screening. Third, colonoscopies aren't as safe and simple as you may think or are led to believe. Colonoscopy can result in significant harms, most often associated with polypectomy, and the most common serious complication is post-polypectomy bleeding. And another significant risk associated with colonoscopy is perforation of the colon, that is. And that is even before taking into account your stress, anxiety, false positives, frequently missed polyps and tumors, and all of the usual recovery-related complications such as infections, constipation, diarrhea, hemorrhoids, diverticulitis, and others. But all these risks pale in comparison with computer tomography known as virtual colonoscopies. Incredulously, instead of preventing your risk of cancer, they actually increase it by exposing you to 5 to 10 millisieverts of X-ray radiation required for just one abdominal scan. According to the United States Food and Drug Administration, this range is not much less than the lowest doses of 5 to 20 millisieverts received by some of the Japanese survivors of the atomic bomb. Goodness gracious, radiation dose from a single virtual colonoscopy is similar to the atomic bomb exposure in Hiroshima, even though, according to the National Cancer Institute, whether virtual colonoscopy can reduce the number of deaths from colorectal cancer is not yet known. But the really frightening part comes next. This increase in the possibility of a fatal cancer from radiation can be compared to the natural incidence of fatal cancer in the US population about one chance in five. In other words, a single virtual colonoscopy turns an otherwise absolutely healthy person with a lifetime risk of colon cancer under 5% into a cancer prone sitting duck with a 20% risk of contracting any type of cancer. Considering these odds, you are actually 200 times safer living next door to a Russian-built nuclear power plant your entire life than having just one single CT scan. And since virtual colonoscopies are now recommended every five years, your cumulative exposure to radiation by the time you reach your 70th birthday will be similar to witnessing not one, not two, not three, not even four, but five nuclear blasts. And your risk of developing any kind of cancer will be five out of five 
or exactly 100%. Not surprisingly, the actual incidence of colorectal cancers in the United States has grown by 30,000 more cases annually, a whopping 22% increase in just eight short years. In terms of cancer, this sharp upsurge is considered an epidemic of catastrophic proportions. So why then do doctors recommend colonoscopies if they are unproven, ineffective, risky, and unreliable? That was the answer to your question. Doctor's profit motive aside, Katie Couric isn't exactly a benevolent Samaritan either. She began urging Americans to get screened for colon cancer while she was employed by General Electric, the owner of NBC Television. GE happens to manufacture and sell CT scanners used for virtual colonoscopies. Since each of these room-sized contraptions cost upward of $3.5 million, what is a better way to keep them minting money than an indirect endorsement by a big TV star? Lo and behold, her handlers ruthlessly exploited her husband's unfortunate death from colon cancer to promote colonoscopies. Because Ms. Koric never disclosed her connection to GE Healthcare, a $17 billion subsidiary of GE and a sister company of NBC, unsuspecting Americans embraced her story and the number of screenings jumped from under 1 million before her famous televised colonoscopy in the year 2000 to around 14 million today. Adding to this hypocrisy, Jay Manahan, Ms. Koric late husband, passed away at age 42, eight years before her first screening is even recommended. This unfortunately means that neither him nor anyone else in his predicament would have likely been saved. Based on all of the above evidence, I pleaded with Ms. Koric first by mail, second on her blog, and finally on my site to stop endorsing or recommending colon cancer screening to 95% of Americans who are in low-risk group. Regretfully, she ignored my pleas and never responded. One change I noticed. After Ms. Koric left NBC for greener pasture at CBS, she no longer refers to the 90% cure rate. Now it is just a measly 5% reduction of colon cancer deaths. Colon cancer is the second leading cancer killer. But if it's detected early, it has better than a 90% cure rate. And seven years later? Colon cancer deaths are down almost 5% among men and 4.5% among women. Sadly, even the small reduction isn't likely related to screenings, and I discuss its probable reasons on this video's transcript page. After this report had already been taped, the Annals of Internal Medicine, a preeminent publication of the American College of Physicians, released a new research paper concerning the considerable failure of screening colonoscopies to detect and prevent colorectal cancer, particularly in the right colon. The editorial commentary by Dr. David Ransohoff, the professor of medicine at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, states the following. A goal of avoiding all deaths from colon cancer may be admirable, but we do not have evidence that we can achieve it. Also, colonoscopy is generally safe. It is still an invasive procedure with a 0.2% rate of serious complications, 10 times higher than for any other commonly used cancer screening test. Repeated examinations over time may incur a substantial cumulative rate of complications, not even counting hard to detect complications if they occur, such as silent myocardial infraction. Colonoscopy is an effective intervention, but as Baxter and colleagues suggest, we must realize that current evidence is indirect and does not support a claim of 90% effectiveness. So who then, you may ask, should get screened for colorectal cancer, if anyone at all? You'll find the answer to this question in the second part of this investigative report.